Hello friends, it's Tyler from Rehab to Fab Designs and today I'm going to walk you through my bathroom makeover. So my cabinets are your typical cherry stain finish and they're very slick in nature so I'm prepping them by using Slick Stick from Dixie Belle so that I can get my paint to adhere without any issues. Slick Stick is great for use on laminate, on plastic, on glass, and on metal items so you can get some grip for your paint to adhere. Leaving the sound on here so you can hear how slick. And then in comparison here where I've prepped it. Sounds a little rougher. Oh, and this is my back wall that meets up to my shiplap, and here it is once we got the wallpaper in place. Next up, it was time to paint the tile around my bathtub. Again, because I don't like the color with my gray walls, I started by taping them off using blue painter's tape from 3M so I could get a nice clean paint line. And I'm painting with Wise Owl One Hour Enamel because I know it will hold up to water splashes from my kiddos. Again, I am using my Dixie Belle mini angle brush so that I have a nice tip on it to get into the grout lines. And I'm simply painting right over top of them. This paint provides really good coverage and dries super hard within an hour of application. As with all paints, to get a nice smooth finish, I apply the paint in one direction, with the exception of the grout lines, I had to get into those. But then once you have it on, you wanna go back over the length of the area you've painted in nice straight lines. I got complete coverage with just one coat. And as mentioned before, in an hour's time, it dries to a rock hard enamel finish. Here's a look at how it looked after just one coat. Now for the fun part of painting my cabinets. I knew I wanted a nice charcoal gray, but didn't have the exact color I wanted, so I decided to mix my own by mixing caviar in the chalk mineral paint line from Dixie Belle with cotton. I started out by just adding a few spoons of cotton into my existing caviar jar. However, it wasn't quick enough, so I ended up just kind of pouring um, some of it into it and then stirring well until I had the exact shade that I wanted. Now we're getting somewhere. This is more like what I wanted. So again, make sure you mix it well so that you have both those colors incorporated well together because we don't want to have any streaking in it. Once you get that done, it's time for paint. Here's a look at it with my slick stick in place prior to paint. And here we go with the process. Hey, hey, it's Tyler from Rehab to Fab Designs. I am back in my bathroom makeover and today I am painting one, my tile around my bathtub, and then two, I'm working on my cabinets. So these um, cabinets were builder grade, well, actually they're custom cabinets, but they are um, they were put in here by the builder when we bought this house. When we bought it, they were in the process of building it, um, and we didn't get to pick our colors or anything except for paint. Um, so I've never really liked any of my stuff because of the colors. They're, um, my cabinets and my countertops and everything were like warm colors, and I'm not a warm color girl I love my cool tones and so I have always wanted to change them and so I'm finally doing it so they were your typical stain color like this um, and the countertops were like a dark gray with like flecks of orange and flecks of green in it and like light gray and kind of a charcoal gray and I just didn't like them there was nothing wrong with them they were very nice but they just weren't my color and I've always wanted to change them I've also always wanted to paint my cabinets but I never have because I knew whatever color I picked was not really gonna match my countertops um, because the colors I tend to go for didn't match the countertop so I never painted them however I just found a countertop that I liked at Lowe's um, I'll have to I've, I've got the name of it in the um, information down below the video so I don't want to mess it up I think it's like Carrara 
Bianco or something like that, but it's not a granite. It's not stone. It is, um, user-friendly to install yourself and it's also affordable for me it's um formica or formica whatever you call it i guess formica um so it is a cheaper countertop but i don't care because i love the color of it so much more than what i had so i'm okay with it so we replaced those we ship lap the wall behind it i took down my huge builder grade uh, mirror that took up the whole wall behind my countertop and we have new mirrors and new lighting as you can see up there don't mind all my stuff out the bathroom is still a disaster because we've got like stuff everywhere because I'm still painting and still hanging wallpaper but I had to pause for a little bit to work on a chicken coop because we got chickens for Easter so um, I'm back in here trying to finish this up and I'm working on my cabinets so prep for the cabinets included sanding them down um, by hand I just used a sanding block and I think 150 grit sandpaper. Um, and the reason I did that is because I was scuffing it. Scuff sanding means you're just kind of taking off the shiny factory finish off of a, an item, cabinets, furniture, whatever it is you're working on. And the purpose of it is to scuff it up or rough it up so that your paint will stick to it because otherwise it's a very shiny, glossy, slick finish. So once we scuff sanded the whole thing, we came back with white lightning from Dixie Bell, which is a chemical degreasing cleaner to remove all the dust and the debris and oil from our skins where we've touched all the cabinets and the handles and just, you know, the cabinets been in use since we've been here. Once we got it clean, we came in with this white color that you see here. This is a product called Slick Stick. It is also from Dixie Bell. Slick Stick is made to apply on the slick surfaces. So you use it on things such as plastic, laminate, glass, um, anything, even metal, anything you wanna paint that you're worried, you know, hey, everybody knows chalk paint is made to be easy and to stick to everything. That's why people like it, because it's super friendly and easy to use and it will stick to your projects. But there are some materials like glass, like metal, like plastic, that it doesn't matter what brand of chalk paint you use, it's just not gonna stick. And that's because it's, there's nothing there. It's just so slick, the paint just will not adhere. Slick stick is your best friend on those projects. So slick stick will help your paint stick by giving it a rougher grip to the surface. So these have two coats of slick stick on them um, and then no sanding afterwards, just put it on smooth. Now, if you don't put it on smooth and you got a lot of brush strokes and it's lumpy and there's drips everywhere, you're also gonna see that in your finish. Doesn't matter how much you sand. So put it on nice and smooth. Anytime you want a smooth finish, make sure you use a good brush. I love synthetic brushes. Dixie Belle has a slew of them. They've got round, they've got oval, they've got mini brushes, and they've got a mini angle. This is a mini angle and it is great for cabinets because as you can see, instead of being flat across the top, it actually has an angle like this. So it's perfect because you got a higher end here so you can get in those creases and corners in these cabinets. So make sure you use a good brush. Um, you can pick those. Klingon brushes are also really good. I prefer synthetic brushes over natural because natural brushes shed and I don't like having to constantly pick out bristles from a paint finish. But that being said, they do have their purpose and their moments, just not when you're using a smooth finish in my opinion. Everybody has their own. That's okay. Um, so after the two coats of this, I'm applying paint. Now Dixie Belle has a couple of different gray colors of paint. They have different light ones and they have a couple of darker grays, but those grays like gravel road is a, a good depth for me. Um, I wanted a little bit darker and a little bit more of a charcoal and gravel road has a little bit of a green undertone to it. I do not want green undertones. I just want charcoal. This is my wallpaper that I hung. As you can see, it's got kind of a creamy beige color in it. It's got light gray in it. It's got darker gray and like a charcoal. So my goal was to go for charcoal. So I mixed my own paint to create this color. I did that using Dixie Belle's Caviar which is black. It is a deep, dark, gorgeous black. Since I wanted charcoal, I needed to lighten it up a little bit, so I used cotton from Dixie Belle. Both of these are in the chalk mineral line. So I basically mixed white with black and created, guess what, gray. The more white you add to it, the lighter your gray is gonna be. The less white you add to it, the darker it's gonna be. And this is drying to, as you can see back here behind me, a um, really gorgeous dark charcoal gray. So I'm super happy with the blend on it. Turned out great. Um, I did not measure it. This 
char or sorry caviar was about up to the top of the paper here for the label and then i started spooning white into it i think i did like four or five spoons and then i just poured the chunk in it because it was taking too long and i'm impatient so i don't really know the mixture the ratio which means i can't run out of paint because i won't be able to get it the same so I've got plenty, so I'm not worried about not being able to complete my project. Once you mix your two paints, you're going to stir them really well. This is chopsticks. You can use a spoon if you want. We always have chopsticks from when we get sushi, and um, I don't eat with them, so I save them and use them for my paint stir sticks because I like to recycle, reuse. So, for your paint finish, you want this to go on nice and smooth so you don't have a lot of paint brush strokes and globs and whatnot in your paint finish because nobody wants to see all that. You gotta have a good brush. That's the most important thing. The second thing that's important is making sure you put it on smooth. If you put this on in multiple different directions, like so, and leave it to dry like that, it's gonna show all those lines. So if you don't want all that, you're gonna wanna put it on nice and smooth. So you're gonna do that by going in one direction, right? So you're gonna go all the way down the length of whatever it is you're painting, whether it's a drawer or a door or the side panel, you're gonna wanna go the whole distance, right? in one direction, back and forth, nice and smooth. If you go up and down, that's okay too, but stick with the up and down all the way. Now there are times where you're gonna have to cross hatch it so you can get good coverage because of the angle or because of like a low spot or a high spot or details around a piece. You may have to like, you know, dab it to get it around the drawer, door, sorry, drawer holes and that's okay. But once you're done and have your paint on, you're gonna come back nice, long, even strokes all the way across the length of it. The other thing is you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're using really light touch. The more you get, once you get it on and get all your coverage and have everything covered and don't have your white showing or your brown if you're painting over wood or whatever it is, you're gonna to wanna to come back with a nice, really light touch. If you're painting with a nice light touch, you're gonna have a nice smooth finish more so than if you're rough. So, really light, really straight, and it's gonna give you that nice, smooth finish. Also, holding your paint at this angle will also help. But again, you're gonna do that as your last step once you have um, all your paint on. And that's it, super smooth. This will dry pretty quick because it is chalk based. So this is what it's looking like. This is one coat guys, one coat of paint over top of white. You saw me paint it here, one coat. That is great coverage for a paint. When you're painting especially a dark color of paint over top of white, it's hard to get the white covered completely. Sometimes it takes two coats, sometimes it's three to get full coverage. This is one coat. That's it, one coat of paint. These two are dry, just finish them up. That's the wet one. So it's gonna be a little bit darker while it's wet. And then you see here, it's dried to a perfect charcoal color. I appreciate you guys watching and I will drop my links down below so you can try it out by using my affiliate link and ordering. Thanks so much, bye. Once I applied a total of two coats of paint, I came in with clear coat from Dixie Belle in the flat sheen in two coats as well to seal my piece for extra durability. I am waiting on new hardware to arrive from Amazon that I ordered and then I will keep you guys updated on the progress via my social media. Be sure and like and subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get notified for new videos.